Hi everyone, it's Michael, and it is time for the August Orchid Collection update, which is so surprising. I feel like it was just July, so, so confusing, but let's go ahead and jump in. Um, I will tell you that I'm going to structure this update a bit differently than I have in the past. First thing I'm gonna do is walk you through the apartment so you can see spatially where I have placed these orchids and generally see what kind of light they're receiving. Um, then we're gonna go down and just chat. I'm gonna gab and I'm gonna blab and I'll tell you all about what I did last month, what I'm doing differently this month, um, any additions to my toolkit, any discoveries I've made, and then we'll go in and look at these orchids one by one in numeric order and kind of talk through what's been happening with them. So let's start with the newest addition to my orchid collection. You haven't seen this one yet, but this is number 33. This is a Dendrobium tangerinum, and I'm so excited about it. I fought a very hard battle to uh, win an auction on eBay for this orchid. So that's what it looks like. It's so beautiful. Um, I haven't repotted it yet. I'm not sure if I want to repot it immediately. You all know that I am extremely, extremely trigger happy when it comes to repotting orchids when I receive them. Um, so I'm exploring um, a different avenue here. So. Let's see where that carries me. Over on this side, you will see I have some of my fowls, um, the urea experiment fowls specifically. There is the one with urea and the urea free on the far right. Um, so I've got my fowls here. They receive light from here and here, but it is always indirect. Um, I also have another fowl right here. And then if we continue over this way, you'll see that I have my epidendrum and one of my phragmopediums. I've got another fowl up there. I have my no idea oncidium. Dendrobium here, I've got my PAF, uh, a couple more fowls, Zygopedlum, and my Alisara. Up here I have my Asocenda or Ascacenda. I still have no idea how to say that, guys. That's my Catacetum. Um, over here I have, getting some direct light, my Cattleya. I have another Cattleya over here. I've got my Psychopsis, that's a Wilsonara, Banfieldara, Bulbophyllum. Up there with even less light, um, but still bright shade, we've got another Bulbophyllum. I have my Maxillaria tenifolia. I've got my, uh, oh gosh, Miltonia Sunset, and then I've got another frag up there, which I don't know if you guys can see, but it is in Spike, which is so exciting. Um, and then down here, you'll see that I have two that are not doing so well because I am very stupid and made a really big oversight with these, um, which we will talk through shortly. If we go over to the bedroom, you will see that I have all of my, I can't believe that they're still trucking along, but here are my Cypripedium A call. All five of them are still alive and kicking. They're not making a lot, well, we'll talk about it in a second. I'm getting overzealous. And then if I turn this way, you'll see that I have a couple Oncidium types getting direct light right in this little windowsill here. All right, beautiful people, it's time to gab and it is time to blab. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, what I did last month is, the biggest change I made was I went to plain distilled water. Um, and I did it just for the month because I wanted to see if it would help um, kind of eradicate any mineral buildup problems I was having with my Leca beads. And it really did, it helped kind of flush everything out. I find that if I do um, just a one hour soak of plain distilled water, it is really constructive for the plants because it kind of flushes everything out. But here's the trade off. I did notice that the progress on a lot of the plants slowed or almost completely stopped. Um, it's really remarkable seeing the difference between using a nutrient solution and just plain distilled water because while it did help to flush out the um, excess minerals, it did seem like the plants just kind of came to a standstill. So that'll kind of lend itself to what I'm going to do this month. But um, the other big thing I did this month was I took a big step back from using Fizan 20. Now, I, again, I, I like to describe this as a pendulum. So the pendulum will swing to either extreme over and over before it comes to rest at balance in the middle. So when I say that I'm taking a step back from something, that doesn't mean I'm washing my hands of it completely and I'm never going to use it again. What it means is I'm evaluating what the other side of that pendulum swing looks like so I can figure out exactly where the resting point in the middle is. Um, so I am taking a big step back from Fizan because I am really curious to know um, how the constructive and beneficial bacteria will impact the growth of the plant. Um, so I've just been kind of observing that process and it, it seems like it's moving in the right direction. Um, I really need to assess the relationship between algae and um, orchid growth because here's the thing, the primary function for Fizan 20 is controlling algae, at least the way I use it in my collection. That's my primary objective. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is that the presence of algae seems to indicate that everything's going fabulously in the container. It means it's a positive growing environment and the orchids are enjoying it. 
And I've noticed that every time I've done a treatment, it kind of seems to slow, and this is just a suspicion of mine, but it seems to slow the overall progress of the plant. So that's something that I'm looking at and considering. Now what I'm doing this month, again, going back to the topic of distilled water and using just distilled water, I'm gonna start alternating uh, plain uh, distilled water soak for an hour um, every week with using a nutrient solution. What the objective here is, is to ensure that I am effectively flushing out all of the excess mineral content um, and allowing the orchid an opportunity to kind of press reset on its system. Um, and I'm going to do that this entire month and kind of see where that takes me. Um, I will not be using nutrient solution on anything that I see has excessive mineral buildup still because I'm still wanting that to flush and resolve itself all the way before I resume nutrient solution. So it is going to be somewhat on a case-by-case -case basis, but primarily what I'm going to do is be alternating one week. I'm going to do a plain distilled water soak and then I will do a nutrient solution soak, so on and so forth. Um, and if you're wondering why I haven't redone my fertilizing and watering videos, it's because I'm still in the experimental stages. I don't want to release something to you as the final be all end all of what I'm doing if it's not. Um, so this is still me in the experimental stages. Um, so those are the really big things. Um, the addition to my toolkit, I am using pH down. So I don't know if you guys saw the repot video where I took care of my uh, cypripediums, but what I did was I used vinegar to address the pH down. I understand that that is, um, it's not a reliable method of doing it because the pH will continue to fluctuate after you have um, adjusted it the first time. So I wanted to go to a more reliable system which is using the pH down. So that is a new addition to my toolkit which I will link below. Um, one of the other things that I'm considering adding to my toolkit is Dynagro, uh, the Orchid Pro, I think is what it's called. Um, the reason being is I've had kind of a contentious relationship with tap water. Um, I was using it to, I stopped watering with it altogether, um, and then I started, I was only using it to flush in between to make sure I was providing uh, calcium and magnesium uh, because my fertilizer solution does not contain it, the one that I'm currently using, which is uh, Grow More. Um, so now that I'm switching to exclusively distilled water, I need to ensure that there is a reliable source of calcium and magnesium that's accessible to my orchids. So um, I do think I want to use that one because it has all of the macro and micronutrients that my orchids will need. Um, but, and I've heard a lot of good things about it. I don't know why I've been resisting it this long, but I think it is time for me to just go ahead and pull the trigger and get the Dynagro. Last thing is that I made a discovery, which is that that white buildup that I have been treating as mineral buildup by my drainage holes, and I know some of you have told me this, so fine, say it. Say I told you so, you're right. <laughs> some of it wasn't mineral buildup, some of it was, but a lot of it was actually white mold. So when there's a lot of decaying matter inside of the grow container and the semi-hydroponic system, um, as it flushes down, the white mold starts to accumulate right at the drainage holes. I'll give you a better example of that as we go in closer with some of the plants, but, um, that is just a big discovery that I made this month. So with all of that, um, with all of that lead in, let's go ahead and jump in. I am going to arrange all of the orchids in numeric order and we will just talk through that. I have tried to <laughs> structure this in the most easy to navigate way that I possibly could. You'll remember that I was using stickers um, on the back, but uh, until I can find a good waterproof sticker, I will just have to use post-its because they just kept washing off. So let's jump in. Um, based off of the community answers feedback, what I've been doing is allowing my Phalaenopsis orchids to dry out a little bit more in between waterings. So rather than just allowing the water reservoir to stay full, um, I kind of just leave maybe a little bit in the bottom. And so it dries out all the way in between uh, each week of watering. And that seems to be really serving the needs of the orchid because it is just going into active growth mode a lot more intensely. And there is a cute new leaf. There also appears to be a cakey growing in between these two leaves here, which is kind of interesting and bizarre, but that is my no ID foul. That was number one. Now we're onto my Ha Yuan Gold Cat Leia. This one has just been pouting for as long as I've put it into semi-hydro. There, I know that there's one new green root in there because I had to repot it um, and put it into a different container, but it just, I'm treating this similarly to how I am now treating my fowls, so I'm leaving just a bit of water in the water reservoir and allowing it to dry in between waterings. Um, so I'm hoping that'll prompt some sort of a response and really force it into active growth mode, but look how shriveled and discolored these canes are starting to get. So I just don't know. Um, on to number three, this is my Wilsonara. This is the Aloha Sparks. And this one pouted for a long time, but just look at it go now. 
look at those green roots and if I turn it, you will see it is really just exploding with growth and finally consenting to semi-hydroponics. So I am thrilled about that. I think I will be seeing blooms from this guy pretty shortly. This is number four. This is a no ID on Cidium type and it's actually, number four is made up of these two. Um, a long time ago I dropped it and I shattered the container and I thought I had broken the orchid into two pieces. Well, it turns out I broke it into three because um, when I was watering it, one of them just floated out. <laughs> so I just thought since it had new root growth on it, I would go ahead and get it repotted into its own container. You can, and it's actually preferable to leave um, a division or um, a keiki in the same pot with the mother plant because it'll regulate the humidity and the bacteria and all of the things that the, or the plant needs. But um, this is just an experiment and it kept floating out and I got frustrated. So I made the not sensible choice, but we'll just see how it goes. So that's number four. And here's the interesting thing about this guy. It also pouted forever, but this has just like the craziest roots coming out now everywhere. So I think this one will be doing very well shortly, but because it was traumatized by being dropped and having the plant break into three, I don't know how long it's gonna take to bloom. So we'll see. This is a little reminder here for me that um, I'm terrible and I killed at number five and number six. So rest in peace guys, miss you, love you. Um, this number seven is my To My Kids Dendrobium Nobly, and it has also just been doing really, really well in semi-hydro. Look at all those green root tips, guys. It's just having the time of its life, uh, feeling really good about things. So I just can't wait till it wraps all the way around the pot because then it'll get stable and then it'll really, really excel, although we are coming up on its winter rest. Um, but there is a new growth coming up in the middle somewhere. Where is it? Where are you hiding? Oh, it's right down here. I don't know if you can see it right at the very base of that guy, but there is a new growth coming along as well. So that's great news. On to my Banfieldara. This is the Mystic Maze. Um, it's a Brassia hybrid. And this one also pouted for a long time and dropped all, I mean, all of its old roots rotted out. But now just look at it go. If I come in closer, you can see it's putting out a bunch of new roots, which are gonna sustain the entire rest of the plant. But when I come out, look how big that new growth has gotten. So it is finding a way to survive. Uh, this is number nine. This is the um, keiki that I took from my mom's orchid and I'm thrilled it's still alive. It, honestly, I just don't know what's going on. It's not getting worse, it's not getting better, it just is. So again, I made that change recently where I'm allowing it to dry out all the way and I'm hoping that prompts a response from it. Um, the leaves aren't wilting. It did put out this new leaf. It has a root there, but it just doesn't seem to be um, moving swiftly in any direction, positively or negatively. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Uh, rest in peace, number 10. God, I suck. Um, so that one's dead. Number 11 is my Psychopsis. This is my Mendenhall Hildos. And it also pouted for a long time, but if I take you in, you can see it has a lot of new green root tips. It is acclimating. And I had to repot it because I almost dropped it again and I spilled it everywhere. Um, but there was so many green root tips. So this one I think is just getting adapted to its container. And then um, I think this one's gonna start going nuts in just a little bit. So keep your eyes peeled for number 11. Number 12, this is my Ox Lottery Prince Phalaenopsis. Same story with all the fowls. I'm not gonna spend too much more time on it. Um, it put out a new leaf. It appears to be doing well. Um, well, it appears to be fine at the moment, but again, it's not making strides forward and it's not taking any steps backward. So just keeping my eyes on it. This is my No ID Fragmapedium. And I really messed up with this one for a really long time. Um, and it, you can see the, the leaf tips started to blacken from too much mineral content and from the tap water. Here's what I've been doing. Um, I've been giving it just distilled water flushes and now the root system is starting to adapt itself and really get comfortable in the system. You can see each of the growths are putting out a new growth, which is just fantastic news. So I think this guy is on its way to being better. There's still a little bit of mold issue in the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that seems to be um, diminishing every time I flush with plain distilled water. So that looks like it's on its way. Another one of my fowls, this is the one from my sister's office, the new ID Phalaenopsis. Um, and when I bring you in close on it, I mean, this guy seems to be doing okay. It just keeps putting out tiny, tiny little leaves, but I would really love to see it kind of hit a stride and just go nuts. But we'll see again if the dry out period is going to facilitate that happening. Uh, number 15 is my Sogo Yugodon Phalaenopsis. This is the one that I'm using to model the four month adaptation stages. So I did go ahead and trim all of the dead and decaying roots from the system. 
and this is what we are left with. Uh, it has three leaves now. It appears to be doing just fine. Not moving forward, not moving backwards. Cool, let's move on. Um, number 16 is my Dapper Dots Catacetum, and this is the one that is really prompting the dialogue about algae. This one had a lot of algae in it, so I did my standard monthly Fizan uh, treatment on it, and then after I did it, it just kind of stopped doing so awesome. It just like wasn't, I think it really relies on those bacteria to help it process the fertilizer solution. Um, so right now it just has plain distilled water in there because I'm still flushing it. But uh, it did plump up when there was algae in the, in the pot, the um, pseudobulb, the old growth actually plumped all the way back up and I was so excited. And as soon as I did the Fizan treatment, it just kind of shriveled again. And the roots are doing fine. It's continuing to put out, let me see if I can get in there, it's continuing to put out new roots and the bulbs on the sides are thickening, but I would really love to see that be a consistent upward trajectory as opposed to back and forth, which is why I'm taking a step back from Fizan treatments, at least for the time being. Now this one is like the standout rock star. I'm gonna pull this out all the way so I can show you because I'm so excited about this. This for me when I did it was the biggest gamble because this is an uh, uh, Asocenda or Ascacenda and I potted it all the way into semi-hydroponics. I was told not to do it because they hate it and they won't survive and they won't do well. And it pouted and it dropped some leaves as you can see from these remnants down here. But then the strangest thing started to happen. From its old growths, it started to put down new roots. Like, I mean, from the old, looks like blackened tips, it just started to release a brand new root growth. And that seems to be happening across the board over the entire plant. And if I take you over this way, look at this guy here. How bizarre is that? It's just starting to go nuts. And then recently when I was peeking up over the top, it's putting out new roots everywhere. It just seems to like just start it's just starting to get comfortable in semi-hydroponics, which I didn't think was a possibility. I thought for sure this guy was going to just kick the bucket, but it's doing great and I'm thrilled about that. So let's keep that momentum going. I'll put this one back and then we will start talking about number 18, which is my Bulbophyllum. Um, I'm really excited about this guy too. I didn't know how this was gonna go, especially because I had to trim off literally every single root that was on here, but it has a beautiful new growth here that's putting down roots. It has a beautiful new growth over here that is putting down roots and really starting to like get some momentum going. But um, I had to repot this one as well because there was so much mineral buildup on the beads. And when I unpotted it, there's a bunch of new root growth on the old bulbs, which I didn't know was a possibility. So this one just seems to be taking its time, but it is absolutely adapting, which makes me so happy because the flowers are so beautiful and they smell so good. Um, number 19 is my Bulbophyllum Fascinator. And y'all, I gotta be real with you. I don't know what's going on with this plant. This has not made any stride in any direction. And for a while I was like, well, that's okay because only the old pseudobulbs are shriveling, but now it appears that the new pseudobulb is shriveling. Um, I don't know what I can be doing, doing differently with this guy, um, but I'm a little concerned about him. He appears high risk to me, which is funny because in comparison, number 20, its brother, the Bulbophyllum ambrosia, just continues to feel great about its life and put down more and more new roots. And the, look at the beautiful new green leaves. It's just, this one is doing so well in comparison to this one. And in theory, they should be receiving generally about the same care, which they are. So I'm not quite sure what needs to be tweaked there or if this one is just taking its time and pouting for a longer period of time. I'm not sure. Um, this is my, and I need your guys' help with this guy. This is my uh, Pachyopedlum Pinocchio Lowy hybrid. It just has been in bloom forever, which I absolutely adore because it's so pretty. And I think it has another um, another little bloom coming about there. But when I come down on it, um, it's fully repotted now into semi-hydro. But if you look on the back side of the growth, I think the entire thing might be rotting. Just right there. Like that does not look good to me. And I keep going back and forth with myself because my biggest mistake with my last path was that I overhandled it but I'm getting the sensation that I might need to unpot this and remove this entire growth before the rot spreads. So tell me your thoughts on that, guys. I'm not sure if you have a lot of experience with paths. Let me know if you think that's a great idea or if you think that I'm just stupid and terrible. <laughs> um, over here, I have my Maxillaria tenifolia. This one, again, seems to just be avoiding adaptation. It really is pouting and pouting hard. Um, it continues to mold. It continues to not like anything I do. It's been getting only distilled water for the last month um, and it's still putting out all of this and that's not what you see up top that's not mineral buildup that's mold it's all over the roots 
and I treated it a million and one times, um, and it just is not stopping the problem. You can see the pseudobulbs are start starting to shrivel. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong with this guy. I stopped treating it because I didn't want to over-treat it. Again, the breakthrough with um, not stripping it of its beneficial bacteria was really important, but this one just isn't pulling out of it. So not quite sure what to do here, but I'm just going to continue on as I have and hope for the best. Um, over here, this is my um, this is my Meltonia Sunset, and you guys, I have bad news. I'm so sad because it did abort the flower spike, and I'm sure that that was my fault, and I bet if I hadn't have treated the uh, root system with um, any antibacterial, I bet that would have stayed and just bloomed for me. So that's what's going on. This one also appears resistant to adapting to semi-hydroponics. This one, if you can see right in there, the new growth is putting down some new roots. And I'm hoping that is a really positive sign that this plant is on its way to adapting. But this has been pouting ever since I put it into semi-hydro. So I'm just hoping for the best for it. But there's no, there's no yellowing leaves, nothing's dying. So that's good. Over here is my Epidendrum Green Hornet. Um, similar to the Maxillaria tenifolia, this one just like is mad. It continues to have all of those mold issues. I don't wanna keep over treating it. So I'm just hoping to flush it every single time I water with plain distilled. Um, but this one is, this one's mad at me and I really want to, um, help it get over the hump. But that's the funny thing about semi-hydroponics. You never know. Some of these will adapt so quickly and easily and just love their life. And some of them will just like be mad at you and hate you for, for months and months and months. And then suddenly just hit the ground running. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm optimistic that that one will do fine. It's an oncidium type. They usually get over it. So I think that one will be fine eventually. Uh, similar story for my Alisara Stellar. This guy is... Um, you can see its pseudobulbs are starting to, you know, dehydrate a bit. Um, but when I flip it over to the other side, you can really see the root system. And it's just, it's considering what to do with its life. It doesn't like what's going on. It's molding a bit. So just continuing to flush this one and hope for the best. Um, a really unexpected standout in terms of doing well has been my, um, this is my Phragmopedium uh, Memoria Maritza Rolando. And look what it did! It spiked for me, you guys. I'm so excited. Um, but I was dumb and I left it in direct sunlight for too long and it had been in direct sunlight. It was doing really well because these leaves are better equipped to handle direct sunlight. Um, it wasn't getting all day. It was in an east facing window, so it would maybe get three or four hours. But for the very delicate new growths, you can see it just kind of singed them. So I pulled it out now. It just is in very, very bright shade um, and it is continuing to develop. And I think the next installment is gonna come right out of there. So you can kind of see that, which is cool. Over here, I have my cat Leia. Um, this is my purple blue Hawaii mini, which is so cute. It sent out another bloom, which is so gorgeous and smells mm, so yummy, guys. Um, but here's the thing. I don't know if you remember, but this is the one I did the pseudo repot on. I will link that video below. But I don't like the outcome, and I am going to repot this fully because... Remember how I said that stuff at the drainage holes can be just mold and not... Uh, mineral buildup. I haven't fertilized this once and that's all mold which is also evident because it's happening on the bark that's inside of the container as well. So if left untreated that can be really detrimental to the plant. So what I'm going to do is just give this a full formal repot and hope for the best. I mean I've got to enjoy the bloom for long enough now so let's just make the right choice. Number 29, this is my Eulafia petersi. I'm so bummed that I made the dumbest oversight. So this guy is a highlight orchid. When I purchased it, I thought to, I read in the description, stays in direct California sunlight. So I was like, great, direct sunlight, that's what I'm gonna do. So I put it right up there in that window in the top right corner, and I thought direct sunlight will be fine. Completely overlooking, shut up Roomba. Sorry about that, he's so rude. Um, but I overlooked one really important distinction between direct California sun and direct Colorado sun. Colorado is called the mile high, well, Denver is called the mile high city for a reason. We are a mile higher up and closer to the sun. So direct sunlight is not the same between states. And because I made that oversight and just left it there like an idiot, I completely burned this growth right here. It is withered, it is so sad. And I, I really hope I didn't completely kill this plant. Um, if I did, I'll just have to try again with another type because I was so excited and I really, really want to see this one bloom. 
um, but you can see even this one is starting to yellow and get spots. So I think I really did a disservice to this one by not thinking more critically about what direct sunlight meant. Um, 30, go to your room. Oh, okay. Good looking out me, <laughs> keeping me on track. Um, so over here I have my um, Cypripedium A calls. And like I said, these really aren't making strides forward or backwards, they are just here. These are watered just slightly differently than the other ones because they do require such acidic um, water. So I've been using pH down with plain distilled water and no nutrient solution because they are super, super sensitive to mineral content or any content whatsoever. Um, and you will see that on this one and just this one, there is some white mold happening right here. So I'm not quite sure where that's coming from, but I'll keep an eye on that. 31, this is my um, Pacific Wild Willy Bingo, or Oncidium Pacific, ugh, why can't I get this right? Oncidium Wild Willy Pacific Bingo, that's it. And this one's doing great. It seems to be happy, it's doing its thing, just continuing along unbothered. Um, its roots are not, they're not doing fabulously, but they're not rotting, they're not molding. So um, that's pretty much how a standard well-established Oncidium will do when you transition it to semi-hydro, or at least that's been my experience. So that one's fine. Over here, I have my Cloesia Rebecca Northern, and I'm so pissed at myself because I thought this was just like my other Catacetum. It's not, it just needs bright shade. And I put it in direct sunlight for a day and a half because I'm dumb and I didn't look at it after I repotted it. And just look at these leaves, guys. Look how sad. Ugh, I, I did that, that's my fault. It just deteriorated so quickly. And you can see, once I got it into bright shade, I mean, it stopped and it still has some green going on, but I just don't know if I killed this plant either. I'm cautiously optimistic. I want it to pull through, but I accept full responsibility. This was my fault. I don't want to see this um, pass because I'm so excited for the blooms, but we will see if I have made an unforgivable mistake. And last but not least is of course the Dendrobium, ten my Dendrobium tangerinum. And that's just so cute. I'm so excited. You guys, I almost totally spaced on giving you an update on the urea versus urea free experiment. So this is continuing on, but this one here is the urea based um, orchid. And this one here is the urea free orchid. And just initial snapshots, I'm gravitating more towards urea free. Um, again, they've been getting it on the same cadence, same dry out schedule, everything. Um, this one seems to be losing its leaf faster. Its root system has, I don't know if you guys can even tell, but there is some mold happening right at the top root. Um, this one has had no issues with mold. Um, it appears to be pretty content in its container. Um, and look how far along it has created a new leaf growth. This one started a new leaf growth, just like that one at the exact same time, but it just stopped moving or making any forward momentum altogether. So my initial thought, and I, I could very well be wrong, is that even though these orchids can't, I mean, Phalaenopsis can use urea, um, I think making it immediately accessible and a more usable form of nitrogen, um, as opposed to waiting for it to break down, is only beneficial. So that's my, that's currently my stance on the matter. I have not resolved this experiment yet, but this is just where I happen to be at the moment. I love you all so much. Please send positive energy to my orchid collection and all of these silly post-its everywhere. Um, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that good stuff. You guys know the drill. I love you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah!